Go ahead and give me that sanity check. <laughs> what? Ooh, too bad, so sad. Looks like you just picked up a derange, my friend. Happy Harvey here, and you'd be insane not to check out Chaotic Click Clacks. That's right, friends. Head on over to Facebook, Instagram, or Etsy and search up Chaotic Click Clacks. Peruse their exotic array of handmade gaming dice. So the next time you're staring into the gaping mall of insanity, you can do so with confidence and style. Remember, Chaotic Click Clacks, where we want to be your clack dealer. Oh, great and powerful and wise senior partners. This is Quentin Nosebomb standing inside the magic summoning circle. I have found a merchant willing to sell me bottles of Kobo blood as long as I provide him with legal advice on an upcoming divorce. Apparently, prenuptial agreements in this fantasy world are even more difficult to navigate than the real world. This has proven a very lucrative case as long as I don't mind being paid in bottles of blood. Since my last report in, we have officially begun our first quest, and I am excited to see the effects of the video game on its active participants. We have been told to kill a fella named Martin Longshanks, and my traveling companions seem to have very little compulsion with murdering a person. Lack of moral fiber seems to be a very prevalent effect of this game. We have begun the quest into the woods in the Outside of the city of Ulm, Laura and Serene proved adept at tracking and following uh, two bandits back to their camp. Uh, it seems that skills like these are ones that are enhanced with exposure to the game. I'm sure if these will trickle out to the real world, but perhaps there can be some sort of training for our less quick-witted junior partners uh, in the game once we get out. Which, uh, you know, any day now, you want to pop me out so I can make a report in person, that would be just fine. Anyway, we are on the trail of Martin Longshanks and are sure to come down to some sort of exciting, uh, combative situation with him. But I will attempt to remain a neutral observer, uh, merely gathering information for our upcoming legal action. Coin Nose Bomb, now officially closing the summoning circle. And once again, trying to get cobalt blood out of his rope. Welcome to Crumpets and Kerosene, an actual play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons game. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Kelly. I play most of your NPCs, not all of them, but most of them. And today around our table, we have everybody. And so let's start with um, Brent. <laughs> Brent, what is your, what's the color of your aura? And, and you know, your character's aura and why? really thought he was going to say underwear for a second. <laughs> I would have. Well, the color of my underwear, you know, um, <laughs> brown. Oh. oh, you never had to clean them. Spotted brown. <laughs> well, the color no, of my aura is probably blue or purple. And because I'm always in my head and yeah. dreaming about something. Yeah. Nice one. Freedom. Uh, Jason's aura is red because he's very connected to his physical body and, you know, aggression and all that stuff. Yep. Cool. All right. What about you, uh, Lee? Uh, I think my aura would probably be like, maybe like pink or, or lavender or something like that. Fantastic. Try and be pretty lighthearted, but I'm not like super social. So <laughs> it's not like yellow or anything. Okay. Um, Alora, I think she tries to go for like a yellow or like a like a gold. She just tries to be very inviting to people. So right on. Cool. What about uh, you? Yeah, I was gonna say Jason, but he's got his mouth full of food. Uh, Jenna, what about you? <laughs> um. So me personally, I think my aura is like a a teal or like an ocean like blue or green. Uh, because I honestly think that I should have been a mermaid. 
Um, <laughs> Interesting. Damn reality. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Stupid things. All right. Um, anyways, um, Serene's is green for growth. Okay. Yes. I like it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, what about you, uh, Seth? Um, personally, uh, my, my aura, I, I don't, I don't know. You guys probably know more about this than I do, but what's the aura of like change, like always changing and green. Like too much green, green. Okay. Then it's green. Um, and Merle, apparently Buzzfeed says Merle's is blue. <laughs> um, <laughs> Buzzfeed, that's all Merle knows green about it. Green. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's you went right to the got. source on that one. It's, buddy. it's wasted. because he's, he's a commitment of phobe. Wasted his battery phone, his brief battery phone life, just to figure out the answer to the question. Uh, what about what's you, Allie? The, what's the color for child murderer? What color is that? Yeah. Probably blue. Blue. Yeah, probably blue. Yeah. Sure, blue. Definitely blue. Uh, what well, about you, Allie? Mine is rainbow pastel stripes. Aww. And... Um, According to the internet, Sophia's is white, which means she has a quick mind and a tendency for perfectionism and nervous energy. Cool. Sounds yeah. right. Yeah. All right, cool. Good job, internet. Thank yeah, you, internet. Now, uh, Jason's not stuffing his face. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us yours? Not right now, but I will be soon. Um, <laughs> my, uh, uh, my aura is apparently uh, yellow because I'm engaging and charismatic and my warm personality draws many types of people in. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> and Quentin's or uh, uh, Quentin doesn't have one because that sounds like a lot of bullshit. <laughs> Fair enough. Face looks like a lot of bullshit, Quentin. Right, cool. <laughs> Your aura's coming Dang. off really red and black right now. And it's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Your chakras are really out of whack. Uh, Style? Yeah. No, my aura's not hostile. I'm fucking hostile. <laughs> That's what we said. <laughs> I, uh, uh, for me, I, I, uh, all the NPCs don't have aura because you guys haven't cast C aura yet. And, uh, I, <laughs> I myself lost my aura in my first marriage. And so I'm growing it now with my current marriage. And so <laughs> that being said, oh. <laughs> uh, nice. So it's like a Schrodinger's, yeah, Schrodinger's thing. Like they don't Schrodinger's have an aura until aura. we look. It's black. Yeah, basically. It's void. So they don't have souls until we check. Exactly. So it's okay to murder them if you don't check. <laughs> and you can right. definitely lose them in a divorce. Yep. And on top of that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, adventurer. Get ready. Pack a bag. Grab a snack. Set back. And hang on. Five, four, three, two, one. You do follow them to. Uh, it looks like a, uh, like a like a weird rabbit giant hole that's uh, twelve foot by eighteen uh, that goes into the earth. Uh, that you can tell. So it looks like a rock shaped structure cave. Uh, that they are continuing to go down, and God, well, the three the entire time they don't even look back to see that you guys are following them. No, nice. you that you're going through the woods or anything. Ace is just uh, crunching on sticks and leaves. Yeah, you guys are <laughs> <literally> <laughs> <walking>. <laughs> you guys are walking behind them, literally, like they could turn around and see, but they aren't really concerned about people following them. Uh, mm. You guys didn't ask about the forest, so who knows what lore uh follows this forest anyway they don't pay attention and this is what you find you find the cave that they're walking into as they uh light a couple of torches off the wall there's a whole bunch of a row of torches uh flint and steel and uh they continue to walk down there can we kill them now uh yeah. i think i'm gonna try to go follow them real quick try to be stealthy into the cave and it, yep if you get stuck down there, we can't follow you. You can. I mean, you can still Without, get like, in a cave, right? Causing a fuss. All right, go ahead. Do I it. have Dimension Door. I can D-Door out. 
this if I need to. Son of a bitch. <laughs> That's true. You can. Yeah. <laughs> well, there goes the whole Aladdin. I back to my I'm room. Oh, yeah, okay, that's right. I got one of those, too. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need can, I can... in the rough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have the whole Aladdin thing where I like, all of them, but obviously that's not going to do any good because you'd be like, ah, fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Peace, bitches. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find a way to completely reverse it, Kelly. I was going to say, unless well, there's magic that stops it. Yes, yes, I'm... <laughs> I've learned. I have an amulet magic. too that I can I can teleport back to my room, Some my safe bitch. space. Stupid. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, you start creepily. Going. As you get to the cave opening, you do sense uh, as you cross the opening of the cave a different sense. It's colder. Uh, the atmosphere changes for you. Even know that you just taken taken a few steps in. Uh, you don't hear the forest behind you, the trees. You don't hear anything other than uh, the cave itself. Uh, and as you turn around to look behind you, it looks kind of like ripply and like you've stepped into a different... Uh... Oh, that's awkward. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a little nipply in here. All right. Um... <laughs> it's a tidbit nipply. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Everybody's at so disadvantage just... when she turns around. No, God, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, listen- I'm just listening. Cutting I'm wearing my cloak for the most part. Um, yeah, they're so extra I'm... loud. They're just talking about how the, when they finally get to everybody else to bring back the information that, they, that they've got about the town so that they know where their next raid's going to happen. And uh, Oh, these are definitely the bandit son. And that they've mm-hmm. captured... A group of people a week ago, and they finally get to skin the last one alive so they can eat. There's someone in there. Do I think that they have the person there? Uh, the way it's also there's somebody it, being yeah. skinned. <laughs> so now we're going to be able to kill them now. <laughs> no, now you uh, have the moral ground. Thank you for to giving us the moral ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the rest of. So, uh, the rest of you see Serene. She looks before she walks into uh, the opening of the cave, and she disappears uh, as she stepped oh. into the cave. How many people do I think are in here? You have no idea. You know the two. If she disappears, Laura's going in after her. Okay. As you step in, well, we can resolve that later. I'm just saying. Yeah. Before yeah. It, she just fucking poof like. Ugh. Yeah, she Dylan. was ahead of you guys, and then you're watching her going because she ran ahead of you to catch up with them, and she immediately disappeared as soon as she opened the mouth of the uh, the cave. And so the rest of you fall yes. in. Uh, the same scenario. Uh, the atmosphere has changed. Uh, you definitely get the cave, deep, you know, cavern feel. You don't get the same temperature as you did outside. Uh, you don't hear the birds, mm-hmm. you don't hear any of that, and it's completely changed the atmosphere around you. Mm-hmm. And as everybody turns around, you see this ripply, like it's continuously to move as you look at the trees as they like ripple, mm-hmm. like you walked into some type of field. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad we just decided to come in here like this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Quentin is just the reluctant follower. It's <laughs> <is> great. Cool. <laughs> Stepped in is like, fuck. You guys. <laughs> Game over, oh, man. Shit. Game over. So, uh, you have a safe space ring, okay? You're fine. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to continue following them as stealthily as I can, and because they want to assess how many of them there are down there, how much space is the person that they want to skin still down there, like you're, all you're, of these different you're things. You're 30 feet ahead of the group because you ran ahead of everybody and then went in, and then yeah. everybody mm-hmm. followed after So you're 30 feet ahead of everybody. So yep. as you're going down here, this mouth of the cave opens up to this giant room as you get, I don't know, maybe 20, uh, like 20 minutes down as everybody's catching up. It opens mm-hmm. up this massive cavern. There's fires. Uh, there's a giant roaring fire to one side. And then there's like little huts all around. And uh, you see a person tied to a pole. 
and like they're sharpening stuff and you see an individual that uh, definitely looks well dressed more than the rest of the group uh, and they all seem to be wearing like bear skin uh, you know animal like bear skin or bear's skin like bear skin like they skinned the bear okay yeah uh, and they're wearing, okay they're like, not wolves. like wearing bear skin like serene bear bears no no uh, bears and, and are we talking bears like forest bears or bears like eric bears like yeah, bears. yeah 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 uh, big see, old bear big old burly bear you see a small group of people wearing valid uh, eric kirkra bones or skeletons on their backs like on their body Oh, so uh, this is where Sophie was. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that makes sense. Oh, like, these oh, are geez. Sophie. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, oh no, Sophie. <laughs> for this moment, uh, Sophie and and um, uh, Merle stayed behind mm-hmm. with the wagon. Uh, mm-hmm. They're they're back there protecting everything else. But uh, so yeah, you guys see that everybody's wearing some type of animal creature. Uh, over their uh... so there's a lot of people and it's a big area right you see oh seven yep that's seven uh, people that you can see uh, outside of huts and you see a total of well that one way you see three uh, small huts and one big hut okay so what I want to do is I want to think really really hard about that time that I tripped on acid super hard, and <laughs> from your like guitar, everything's like <laughs> <laughs> super psychedelic, and I cast hypnotic pattern at them. I'm like, "Hey guys, look at the pretty lights." Okay, uh, what do they need? And they make wisdom. Save? They gotta make wisdom saves. Some dice here, uh, and as you're doing this spell, uh, it takes a little bit to put it together and everything as everybody's approaching <laughs> you. Uh, yep. Just to give time for everybody to catch up. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. Just drop lots of dice here. All right. Let's, let's <laughs> drop some more of these. Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, Get 19 of these. I mean, I don't want to, like, shortchange the situation. i got to use all the... Yeah. yeah, why balance the R's so you can just, like, roll them? Yeah. All right. They need to say it to... Uh, what, what did they have to say? What's the number? 17. They need a 17. Oh, fuck. They all got 20s. Uh, two or saved. ones. Or one, yeah. Uh, one or 100. S- <laughs> two saved, uh, and the rest <laughs> did not. Great. <laughs> they are one. incapacitated. They are just staring and drooling. Like, Whoop. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they felt It's such other- a good spell. The two that I know, I love it. seem to be the ones that are about to skin this human that they have uh, tied That's up okay. to this that. giant pole. <laughs> uh, they seem to be very focused oh. on this. Oh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> I shall... <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> Jason, right behind your neck just blows a bunch of bad breath on your neck as you cast the spell. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's why you need to face everybody. That was the surprise one. <laughs> it was a surprise oh, nice. round. I get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, fucking the majority of the room is completely like, uh, but... Uh, okay, I then I'm going to take off my cloak and then I'll just start approaching. Okay, so you're, you're going to, as you do the spell and everything, everybody walks up and you just drop your cloak and start walking in. Uh, what is mm-hmm. everybody else doing? I'm going to give everybody a, a free round of... Uh, of uh, well, I probably have to make a save because I wasn't given any warning. Uh, no, she's not, <laughs> uh, she's not facing you, so therefore... Oh, okay, it only works from the front? Yeah, it's not popular. Yeah. <laughs> They're magic boots. It's full frontal, <laughs> not... Yeah, yeah full frontal. I mean, yeah. I mean, the answer is great, but it's not where the no, magic right. is necessarily happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then I will follow closely behind while definitely not appreciating the back. <laughs> Smelling the <back. laughs> Oh, God, you smell good. No. How uh, far away are these people from me? From you, everybody's about 30. Every, everybody's 30, so they're one round away from everybody because it's a big opening in the cave, so they're not All right. in front. So okay, you guys, so from the mouth to the opening. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's be very clear here because that's how we need to do 
area effects. The person that's tied to the pole is in relation to everyone else. They're the furthest away you can see them, but I'm going to say they're 40 uh, because they weren't fully affected by uh, Serene's spell. Uh, so they were pretty much outside the boundaries of her uh, ability. I'm going to put that at 40, and everybody else is within the 30 meter uh, cone of her spell. The room itself is 100 meters wide and mm-hmm. 50 meters deep. So they're not 300 up feet, huh? Yes, thank you for doing the real map. Yeah, I was like, that's... are we doing meters or feet here? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry for D&D's all you... and feet, you know. Not, not... 300. <laughs> that's not... a big room. <laughs> Sorry, non... What is that in real distance? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 100 feet wide. Uh, okay. Circular room that's 50 feet in width. Okay. So it's like a giant... So in thing. between... In between Serene and the guy that's t- tied to a pole, there's about a 10-foot area. Uh, no, they're 40 feet away from the opening where you guys are at. So it opens up to this big room. That is not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the distance between Serene and the guy who's tied to a pole. She is, uh, as she started walking in, she's at 30 at that point. She's still 30. She's one so, round yes. away from them. Yes. And okay. the guy is 40 feet away, so there's about a 10 foot difference between her and the guy on the pole. Right. Okay, so I would like to cast Tidal Wave within that 10 feet. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> because it's up to 10 feet, so I can do right about in that range. Oh, up to 30 feet. Oh, okay, so I can do 30 feet across the whole canyon. And it can move up to ten feet, but I would not like to hit Serene, and so you I will do 10 not feet hit in front of her, in the pole. right? Yes, right. So yeah, 10 feet in front of her, and it'll get everybody in the cone, but not the uh, people skinning. Cone. Yes, it's Definitely gonna like it's, it's gonna, gonna, gonna crash right. Okay, yeah. So we can do some words for this, right? Yep, no, it totally okay. works. It's not going to reach that situation, but it's going to definitely hit everybody else in front of oh. her uh, as she's okay. walking uh, seductively towards. And she's not even paying attention to you guys. So this giant tidal wave is going to appear in front of her. And oh, gonna, yeah. Ugh. It's going to be red. It's going to be great. And then she's going to be like, damn, did I do mushrooms again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically Aphrodite she's... Emerging from the sea. So she's walking in, and she's, like, strutting and showing off her outfit, and I'm going to come up behind her and just sort of, like, banjo play a couple notes, like, and this giant tidal wave is going to come up over her and crash in front of her. Okay. Whoa. I don't have enough D20s to save. They're at disadvantage, so I'm just going to roll these once. So they need to make a dexterity saving throw. Four get to reroll because the other ones definitely did not. One. Okay. Uh, one person, uh, it did not affect them. Everybody else just got hammered with a uh, giant tidal wave. Uh, so they get full damage, and I'm assuming the person that saved gets half damage. Yeah, so they get half damage, and the people that did not save, um, they get knocked prone. Okay, so half they- damage. That- does that shake them out of their hypnosis? Yes. It's too uh-huh. late. So uh, well, all of them are on the ground. It is, I didn't know you were doing it, so it's fine. One person <laughs> kept their composure. I mean, like they were stumbled back, but they did not fall. Uh, the rest of the room, so there's only three standing people right now. The two that are about to skin the one person, which was outside mm. of the spell, and th- there's one person within the realm of the spell uh, that is didn't get not prone but is no longer mesmerized by uh, Saru. Well, they All take right. 21 damage. Okay, so none of them are getting up. And, uh, <laughs> one... <laughs> Ever again. <laughs> Ever again. <laughs> the one standing is uh, cringing uh, slightly, but he seems like he's well, he's got armor and he's put together quite well. Uh, is and, this is this Longshanks? You don't know. Probably, yeah. We have no idea. Is this the taller, nicer dressed guy? Well, mm-hmm. you don't you don't know who it is. But 
Uh, after that cast, Jason, what would you like to do? And uh, Quentin. Well, after that, I'm going to run in and hit the guy that's still standing. Okay, it's going to take you... Well, we yeah. can't kill him yet! <laughs> no, nope, kill the think. Skinners. Kill the Skinners first. It's too late. You just said you're going to run in and check well, the Well, that's guy. just what I'm yelling. That's as okay. You're by. Do Jason, whatever you want. Or, yeah. uh, Quentin, what are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, orders demand, which is when I I, I can uh, order everyone to do whatever I say. They gotta make motion throws. Uh, so I yell, uh, uh, "All right, all you put your, your weapons on the ground. Those of you who are still breathing." What's the range? Uh, Thirty feet. Everyone within thirty okay. feet must make a wisdom save. We can so the, charmed the, until the, the, end of the, turn. the the one guy by himself. He's gonna roll wisdom. Why the fuck not? Uh, he does not fail, and he drops his uh, double-sided uh, battle axe <laughs> as uh, fucking Jason gets up to him. Jason, uh, what would you like to do? He just, as soon as you walk up, he just drops his weapon. Like, <laughs> Oops. Don't kill uh, him. I'm going to hit him with my mate. Yeah. Okay. And I'm Don't trying to until make we can kill him with a rock. Yeah. So you you're, you're hitting him, or are you, what are you doing? I'm hitting him with my toy mallet, and I'm even making it non-lethal. Awesome. Oh, good. Congrats for stating non-lethal. Go ahead. <laughs> good job. Uh, the first attack is... not going to give you XP for that, because that should be a given. A 23 hit? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 15 damage for the first hit. He fucking drops like a sack of potatoes. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no at least so it was hard. non-lethal. Yeah, it's totally get the, uh, the acne, like, boom, 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 that comes out of the, the hammer itself uh, <laughs> as it plows into his forehead. Is, uh, he, is he down to zero? Or does he, he look like he's like way past zero? If it was okay, regular I'm, a, damage. I'm gonna real quick cast stabilize the dying out of that cantrip just to spare the dying. It's not lethal. It you, should yeah. be fine. Well, yeah. I'm just I just I'm it's, I, I've known y'all in long enough. Just make me feel a little better. We can just make sure <laughs> that's oh fine. If it was going. lethal, his skeleton would have shut out the battle. Right, 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 right. But it's skin. Uh, no, he hits the ground. <laughs> Uh, it's a cantrip. I just get to do these whenever I want. So yeah, it's a cantrip. Yeah. The other two. Uh, at, so the other. Wait, two, I have another attack to... <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a soul stone in your hand? <laughs> I'm going to uh, use one of my hand axes and throw it at one of the other two. Son of a bitch. Oh, were they outside of my of the range of my command word? Yeah. My orders demand. Oh, yep. okay. They're at the forty foot mark. Go oh, ahead okay. and move closer. All right. Uh, that is a 28 to hit. <laughs> yep, you literally just hit him straight in the chest and he flies into the wall and he's like, and like don't even roll damage, not even worth it. Alright. Uh, <laughs> <Oops. laughs> uh, and the other person, um, three, fuck, uh, starts running, he's like, Oh fuck! <laughs> and he sticks <laughs> off running uh, towards the biggest hut, uh, and he makes it there because that's his action. It's his turn. Uh, he gets inside the hut, and you don't see him anymore. Uh, we're gonna go back up to Serene. I'm going to uh, approach the hut. Uh, it is in your range, so you get to the hut opening, and it's. Uh, are you just walking up to it? Mm-hmm. Yep, okay. just sauntering. As soon as you get to the opening, there are three people inside this hut. I cast... Oh, I hip, oh, no, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to cast Hypnotic Pattern when I got up there. Because of whoever was inside. And I was just going to say, look at the pretty lights, guys. Uh, what are they have to Aren't roll they trippy? To save against it's, wi- it's wisdom. Well, first we're going to roll... Um, Senate. Uh, oh, oh, one got a 20. Okay. Uh, one is completely unfazed by your uh, glimmer. 
and and, is, okay. and saves against your um, hypnotic suggestion. Magic boobs. Yeah, your magic boobs. Hypnotic boobs. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and the other two are completely just dumbfounded. And he looks at you, and he goes to fire some type of uh, looks like a blowgun dart. And he's gonna fire. Oh fuck! What's your AC? So low, it's like fifteen. <laughs> That's that is not low. It is too. <laughs> Merle's is like 23. 17, 18, 19, 20. But that's okay. all Merle does. As soon as you go in there, the two are looking at you, and as soon as you look at the He's not get hit. The affected. He's <laughs> not get uh, hit, yep. Shoots you in the neck <laughs> with a dart. Uh, it sticks in. You take four points of damage, and you immediately roll me as a safe person poisoned. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Which dice isn't going to fuck me today? Uh, okay, so that one's not bad. Is it 18 for... Um, okay. You don't feel paralyzed. You take four points of damage. Uh, you do feel a mm-hmm. numbing sensation uh, where the dart hits you in the neck. Uh, I say his, rude. His second You've had so many... <laughs> it comes out more like... Rude. His, second <laughs> dart, yeah. his second dart is a natural 20. Uh... That'll hit. Yeah. And that's going to do... Seven points and then do another save at disadvantage. Uh, Only eight this time. Uh... You feel like a paralytic uh, feeling over your body as you fall to your knees and you don't seem like you can do anything about it. And the rest of the group, because uh, that was both of his actions, uh, and you're paralyzed. What are you doing, Alora? Okay, so I just killed like three people. Uh, um, six. Nice. Nice. Good for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, there's still two people next to the guy that's about to be skinned. One. Uh, he, One. He ran off. He's not even in there. Uh, this person's still like tied up to the ropes, like screaming, gaggly um, against well, the wall. And there shouldn't person, be anybody yeah. near. There shouldn't be any, no, anybody no, no, near. No, 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 no. Right? Finish. And the other person okay, sorry. to the tent. So there's no one there except for the person struggling. Awesome. Uh, to get free. Yeah, I gotta run over to that person and try and uh, slice their ropes. Okay, that's your action. Um, yep. Do I do it? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get up there. There's no, like, it, it, there's no resistance to it. So, yeah, you get in there and you cut them down. Uh, okay, I'm gonna cut them down and then, like, so my, my blanket around them be like, it's okay, man. Stand over there. We're going to take care of this. Fair enough. Uh, and then we're going to go to Quentin and Jason. What are you guys doing? Uh, well, At the same time? Jason. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Like, are we doing... I'll let Quentin go first. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm, I guess I'm going to saunter over the same hut that that guy ran in. Um, no, no, I'm not. Forget that. I don't... I don't I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I'm gonna go over to the guy that Jason knocked out and, and see if I can look through his pockets and find out if this is the guy we're looking for. If this is our mark. <laughs> <All right. laughs> as, Jason, as you're standing there with your mallet all proud because you knocked him unconscious and it looks he's totally fucked. Uh, Quinn runs over it and uh, you know the typical Friday thing. Give me my goddamn money, <laughs> you know, it starts searching the body. Uh, yeah, so roll me a, a search. Investigation? I think that's what it's called these days. No. Balls. Um, five. Yeah. Yep, you find a pair of balls. Uh, yep, I sure do. Yep. Those are where I expected them to be. <laughs> you don't really see anything. You can't, you don't find anything on this person's other it's got a hole in his pocket. It's closed. Uh, Jeez, these things are huge. There's candy in here. What the fuck? Uh, uh. 
<laughs> Jason, what would you like to do? I mean, so uh, do I see yeah. Serene drop to her knees? Uh, no, she's inside Only of in your the dreams. hut. <laughs> she's inside the hut. Oh. Out of your, out of your All right. view. I'm going to follow her in then. She's going to leave the corpse or the person that you knocked out got just in Quentin uh, doing the typical... Quentin seems to have this taken <laughs> care of. Quentin seems to have things well in hand. I'm like, uh, I get dibs on any magic items. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just looking for an application. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Like the uh, ambulance chaser that he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, you saunter over to the uh, the opening of the thing. You see Serene on her knees. Uh, it seems like she's paralyzed. Um, like her hands are by her her side on the ground, and she doesn't seem like she's moving. How far was it to the hut? Uh, it's your full movement to get to the hut. I have forty movement. So. Okay, you got ten more feet to go. Uh, inside right. the hut is only 15, so you can still reach uh, the person on the other side. So I'm going to um, just pull Serene around the corner out of their view and then Aww. start heading towards them. All right. Uh, yeah, she seems like she's Griga Mortis. It's like she hasn't changed her position as you pull her out of the, the hut, out of the range of combat. Uh, that puts you out of the range to do anything to the individual himself. Uh, it is Why don't you try that shit with me? It's his <laughs> turn. Matter of fact, he's about to. He's going to try that shit with you. Uh, uh-huh. You're at disadvantage. And Better hope I rolled shitty. Don't worry. He did it for you. The highest of his advantage is a seven. Uh <laughs> Nice. You hear you hear the the uh, whisping sound of two darts fly past your head, uh, and Pierce Quentin's ne- no. <laughs> <laughs> three darts too many. <laughs> uh, yeah, the arrows go past you. So they don't do anything. We will go back to the top of the round. Uh, Alora, you comfortably help this humanoid creature as he's let down. Uh, what would you like to do? Is he okay? Uh, he looks at you, but you get the sense that it, he doesn't seem like he was in danger at all. And you actually uh, get this mm. cold chill that runs down your your, your uh, Oh, body. fuck. Okay, so... <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> uh, I'm going to look at him. Does he have, like, weapons on him? No, and as you look at him he is in the more weapon. detail, roll me a d20. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's a 20. Nice. Okay, you get the sense that uh, washes over you, and you feel this urge, like you don't want to do anything with him, but you feel this immense urge that you want to go over and punch Quentin in the face, uh, but it passes you quickly. Uh, now, was that from the guy, or is that just how Alora feels most of the time? You have advantage to resist. I mean, you have disadvantage to resist. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 as you turn, and, and tell fucking it, lawyers <laughs> washes over you. You turn and look at Quentin because you have the urge to want to punch him, and you looked at him as you turn back around. Uh, this individual's hand uh, goes across your cheek and he says something in a language you don't understand uh, he knows. as he loses I want to stab him okay oh, oh <laughs> god <laughs> bad things are about to happen you should so you, do I get attack? where's yeah, your proton yeah. pack? use that <laughs> it's all you it's just it's so loud that's fine <laughs> Uh, I want to. Ask. I want to do like I have a rapier as my only like melee weapon, so I kind of want to like do a non-lethal like just kind of pin him to yeah, the you ground. Yeah, you can just hit him with the butt of your your weapon too if you want. To, to... I was more of thinking like stab him through the shoulder so he won't oh, okay. die immediately. Yes, and then roll me a possession. And then save. sort of get him down. Oh, a what? Okay. A possession save. A what? Sorry. Roll? Possession. Say versus. That's possession. skill. What wow. is that? 
That would be it's just a d twenty. A d twenty constitu- uh, constitution save. Wisdom. Constitution. constitution. Red. Okay. Constitution. Great at constitution. <laughs> so <laughs> to much do a non lethal hit. No, it's the uh, when he touches your face, uh, but he jumped into the attack. So go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, that's a thirteen. Okay. Mm. Nothing happens, and yeah, you uh, rolled a strike. That was basically to find out if you were gonna, if you're willing to actually stab him. Uh, but you have no uh, <laughs> no loyalty. Okay, nope. lo- 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 that's a uh, that's a dirty twenty. Yeah, you know he he doesn't have <laughs> the stuff. You you jab it through his arm, and he's like, "Ow!" <laughs> As he falls to the ground. <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> uh, so that's a uh, it's fourteen non-lethal damage. Yeah, yeah, he goes down to the ground. <laughs> He's you very non lethally stab uh, him through the arm. Yeah. But as, <laughs> as he falls to the ground, you can visibly He's the guy's not going to die right now. Is you, all can, I'm you can visibly see the magic emanating from the wound that you created in his shoulder and emanating from his body. Like the glow as like as he falls to the ground, it seems like, you know, when you like kick up a bunch of dust and it kind of goes up a little bit, you see that in the form of like magic. Uh, bouncing off of the ground from his body as he lands on the ground when you plow him into it. And that's your okay. action. So, so I plow uh, the guy. And yeah, then... you plow him <laughs> hardly. Uh, <laughs> going over to Quentin. So you're going to search again. I give everybody three chances to search and no one's engaging you. No, because I, I just watched, I just noticed out of the corner of my eye uh, <laughs> two blow darts go flying over my head. And then Laura stab a dude in the arm and pin him to the ground. Oh, or outside uh, the tent. You didn't see me. <laughs> I'm not in the tent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you were. Okay. No, no, I'm. I'm. I was just. I was searching the guy that uh that uh, Jason knocked out. <laughs> so you're like 10, 15 feet away from me, just stab this guy in the arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! <laughs> on the ground. Uh. Oh, Laura, Jeepers Creepers! What the hell did you just do? Uh, he, he's not good. <laughs> no, you stabbed him in the arm. I wouldn't be good after that either. Uh, um, no, I'm, I'm gonna. No, uh, I'm, I'm gonna actually gonna cast uh, bless on Jason. Uh, you get three people him. in bless. Oh, I buddy. can't see him. Oh, he's in. He's in the tent right now, huh? Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, he drug gonna... me. You can bless me and Alora and yourself. <laughs> I, know, I, t- okay. I take it back. He he came out uh, of the tent, so you can visibly see him because he's dragging. Yeah, he I was gonna say I thought guy. he like pulled himself out of the way of the. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. See, you can, so you see him pulling Serene out of the opening mm-hmm. of the. Uh, mm-hmm. thing, so you can do whatever you want. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm just gonna say I don't. I don't know which one of y'all is going to do what next, so uh, <laughs> good luck, everybody. And I'm just, like, waving my hand. And, uh, Whatever uh, happens, I bless yeah, it. Yeah. What's, your, what's, your, what's your AC? What's my AC? Yeah. Uh, 18. Okay. Oh, 19. Sweet. As you're doing that, casting a spell in that direction towards mm-hmm. uh, Jason... A hand grips you across the throat, tightens as he's holding your face <laughs> towards them and turns you a little bit. The guy on the ground, his eyes are a dark, dark blue uh, with little energy emanating from it. As you look down, as he turns your head towards him, and he just you, he's just staring at you straight in the face. He's got you in a grip, but you can't say anything uh, to alert to, yeah, to alert anybody of the situation. And Jason, uh, <laughs> you uh, you get uh, Serene out the door and uh, two little darts uh, swing past you, but then you feel this immense uh, confidence uh, come over you. Right. Huh. I don't even need to rage to kill you guys. I do have a new pl- present I'm going to try out, though. And um, I'm going to pull in energy from the room and cast haste on myself. 
Alright. Ooh. Uh, spiraling from the fires all around and uh, the ground itself, the plants uh, emanate some really cool energy that's flowing from those objects into uh, Jason and you immediately uh, feel um, haste. And then I'm just going to kind of move towards them. Okay. So as you're moving, uh, you know, extra fast inside the tent, uh, the individual is trying to reload his dart gun. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) He's got a double barrel uh, blow gun. (laughs) He's going to crack it open and drop them both in. He brought... he brought a blowgun to a Jason fight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a to reload. It's like a Bob Samson. He pulls a string and the like the little curtain goes over the thing. He's like, yeah, I got this. Uh, no. So you start making your way over to him. He's loading his weapons. Uh, we're going back up to um, Laura. Okay, so... This guy. Let me see. What do I got? Yeah, Quinn, you've of taken course. four damage. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the temporary just... hit points. You mean Serene. Serena. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Apologies. It's all good. Yeah. All bards look alike, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, my best friend is a bard. I, I can say that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> call back <laughs> uh, can it can this uh, guy make me a little wisdom saving throw uh, nope he cannot make the save but uh, <laughs> lovely <laughs> that's rolled, great he's charmed I, I rolled an 8 so bitch I this is my good dice, too. Uh, so he's going to be charmed by me for the next hour. That's oh. a pretty good charm that you did it to him after you stabbed him through the arm. With the oh, please, shove it in deeper, please. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, you, you didn't know that he was into that, Quentin? He's I don't Duh. Know. He didn't know he was into that either until she cast that spell. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I cut him down from this, so I'm gonna uh, try and help him stand up and say. Are you gonna leave the blade in his shoulder? Like, yeah, here, I am. Yeah, here, let me <laughs> hold, this, like, yeah, hold this deeper. No, let me pull you into the hilt. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, no, that's exactly what's fucking happening. And I'm saying, okay, who well, are he's, you? He's, he's looking We've come at you to like, help you. <laughs> He's, as you're bringing him up, he's like, ow, okay, ow, okay. And you get to the top. <laughs> uh, once you're standing up, uh, he does not tell you who he is because, um, I mean, he says his name's Steve. Because? Uh, he just says his name's Steve. Steve. Ban- yep, Steve the Bandit. Okay. Well, that's probably my whole turn. Okay. So, Quentin, uh... <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, roll me a d20 possession save. Which save? Disad- possession. Uh, with so that's a constitution? Yeah, a constitution at disadvantage. Well, shit, don't make me roll shit I don't have. Uh, 12. <laughs> uh, no. So, as you're looking at him as he's choking you, this energy mm-hmm. leaves his mouth and goes into yours. Uh, you feel this energy enter your body. Uh, and you That's feel like your, alien. your subconscious, your mm-hmm. consciousness is shoved into a a clear box that you can tell, uh, like you're present but you're not. You don't have control over your faculty faculties. Uh, as you're looking at yourself through your eyes but not able to control, uh, he lets go of the uh, the person he's holding as he falls limp. And uh, his face shrivels uh, a little bit. Um, as you look up, everything's really hazy uh, to you as you uh, see Serene standing there, or uh, laying up against the tent. You see Alora holding uh, this individual in the corner, and Jason you can't see because he's inside of the tent. Uh, and you have no control over your body, uh, and your body just starts walking uh 
towards the exit of the um, the cave. And Jason, uh, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to pound people. Okay. So yeah, he's mm-hmm. looking going at to pound town. The, the typical like, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he loads his gun, but you you obviously you have the chance to get yeah, he can do an action. Uh, Does he well, cock his have... blowgun like a shotgun? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just pops it up with his wrist. Oh, yeah. uh, first is a 24 to hit. Yeah. <laughs> That's eight, nine, 18 damage. Yeah, as soon as you hit him, like, his jaw and most of his face uh, completely just blows off to, the, to into the fire. <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> blood spraying out of his mouth. Uh, and he falls onto the fire. Uh, he doesn't seem like he's trying to escape it, but what, what's your second hit do? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, that's even better to hit. Uh... And so the damage on that would be not as much. It doesn't matter. Ten. You crush his uh, back. Uh, you could hear his spine snap as you hit him in the back. Uh, he stopped moving because you knocked him unconscious anyway. Uh, you hear the crunch of his spine. Uh, he is definitely dead. Um, yeah. And as Did you look two around, more people in here. Nope, that was it. Oh. Okay. The one, the one dude. I'm gonna head out then. And see All right. Going on with else. Uh, as soon as you walk out, uh, you see a lawyer like holding someone, like trying to get information against the wall. Uh, Serene is still trying to wake up on the side, and Quentin just appears like he's like, eh, and he's just walking out of the cave. Uh, and that, <laughs> that, that's your action essentially. Uh, see ya. This is Quentin. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Um. Serene, uh, you come to. Oh, good. Uh, I guess I'll stand up. Um, and uh, Quentin's leaving. That's confusing. But did I, while I was paralyzed, did I like witness what happened with that guy? No. You know that numbing feeling you get when your legs or, or hands fall asleep. Your entire yeah, body yeah, yeah. is like that, including your eyes. So it was a really trippy moment where you, like, it seems like it's continuously shaking. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was all blurry to you. Uh, but your entire body still feels asleep, but you're able to do stuff. Uh, it's that team. Okay, so what I'm going to do to that guy who, uh, I assume Alora has a good reason for stabbing. Yeah, yeah. Um, she usually has good reasons for violence. Um, <laughs> if it was one of the rest of you, I might question it, but. <laughs> I always have good reasons for violence. <laughs> oh, According to you. Jason, Jason um, has good reasons for violence. I mean, certainly. From Serene's standpoint, usually Alora has a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to uh, say some unsettling words at the guy who is uh, being questioned. She's using her bardic inspiration um, in the way that uh, eloquent bards do and says, you're going to answer her questions or I'm going to get angry. And she says it like deadpan and like without blinking and it Looks like she could be a psychopath a little bit, but you know, whatever. He rolled a two. He's like, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, yeah. He's and so yeah. So he has a uh, minus D ten from all of his saving throws that he makes before my next turn. That doesn't matter. He rolled a four. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, yeah. We, we probably absolutely decimated. <laughs> Uh, Martin Longshanks at some point. <laughs> He's already dead. He might have been dead already. <laughs> oh, shit. It was shit. actually title wave well, number two. I was going to say the title wave number two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was in my first time. I don't know if I already <laughs> fucking murdered. <laughs> so, so, Quentin, as you're walking slowly, um, again, you have that 
that hazy, wavy feeling like you're not in control. Uh, and you just you get outside of the, uh, the mountain because uh, you hurried out. And uh, you look around and you see off in the distance. You see, you see everybody uh, by the animals and everything. And you just kind of look to the side and you peel off to the left of the uh, mountain. And you start going into uh, the tree lines. Now, can I... How fast is he moving? He's moving I'm, I'm fast. slowly walking down the hall faster than a cannonball. Um, Apparently he's sprinting yeah. because this room is 30 feet and his movement's probably he was already, 30 feet, he was so he had to double move to get out of the cave. Yeah, he wasn't doing anything for combat wise, so he doubled his uh, movement speeds. Now, can I... And Now, now you say I'm, I'm locked in a little box inside my noggin. Um, do I feel like I can try to pop my way out of the box? Or do yeah. I not even have the... Roll, roll me a d20. I'd okay. just like to point out I have an 80 movement speed when I hasted. That's insane. Yeah, it is. That's really like crazy. Like just like a, just a heroin. Uh, would you am, am I adding any modifiers to that? Boy, you should be going back. Monks. No, not yet. <laughs> I can move yeah. like 1,300 feet in a round. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You haste a tabaxi monk, and they can do anything. <sighs> Uh, what did you I used to make that joke whenever we'd play. I'd just be like, oh, how far away are they? Never mind. I'm there. <laughs> Quentin, what'd you roll? Uh, do I get to any modifiers? No. Uh, an 18. Uh, yeah, the glass spiders uh, in this box that you trapped in. And uh, as soon as it shatters away... Uh, the energy force is shoved out of your body. Uh, you hurl it up, basically. You throw up this weird energy <laughs> ball uh, and okay. it shoots off into uh, a direction. Uh, a straight line through the... Um, the straight line that, that it was taking me, or does it go off in a direction? No, no. In the way it was going. So away from the rest of you know the party. Okay. And, everything. and that's where we're going to end this episode. All right. In the middle of the combat? <laughs> Thank yous for listening to Crumpets and Kerosene. Join Jason and the Argonauts as the party make their way through Kaltenburg. Download us on Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, and anywhere else you download your favorite shows. You can also follow us on Twitter at D&D underscore Crumpets, Instagram at Crumpets and Kerosene, Facebook, Crumpets and Kerosene Podcast, YouTube, Crumpets and Kerosene. We also have a website, crumpetsandkerosene.com. DM is Kelly Williams. Twitter and Instagram at infantry underscore kitchen. Jason is played by Brent Marquis. You can find him on Twitter at Brent Lee Marquis. Merle is played by Seth Nason. You can find him on Twitter at Nason underscore duck. Alora is played by Amanda Lee Baldwin. You can find her on Twitter at LemonSeed05. Sophie is played by Allison Webb. Quentin is played by Jason Cassidy. You can find him on Instagram at Dungeoneering with Jason. Serenity Serene is played by Jenna Marie. You can find her on Instagram at chaotic underscore click underscore clack. Production of Crumpets and Kerosene is done in-house. Sound effects used in this episode are sourced from Epidemic Sounds and remastered on Vegas Pro 17, Adobe Edition, and Aphonic Sounds. Need some excitement on that morning drive to work? Welcome, adventurers, to Constructed Chaos, a live play Dungeons & Dragons podcast full of unpredictable antics, borking doggos, and engaging fantasy storytelling and roleplay. With sessions recorded in a professional studio setting, you'll feel every bit of the action and hear every snide remark by the snarky NPCs. Jump in and have a listen to our flagship campaign, The Wrath of Zealous, to help us construct some chaos. In a world of magic and mystery, where danger lurks around every corner, a new type of hero emerges. Brave, resourceful, potty trained. I, I, poo, I, I, I pooped in my pants. Well, maybe not potty trained. Coming soon only to the Crumpets and Kerosene Patreon, it's Babies and Broadswords. Someone, someone, someone please, my, my pants, I pooped in my pants.
Maximum Roll. Join us each week as we interview folks within the gaming and entertainment industry, such as writers, illustrators, artists, podcasts, Twitch and YouTube streamers, social media content creators, handcrafted gaming apparel and merchandise, and much more. You can find Maximum Roll on Apple and Spotify and anywhere else you find your podcast. If you want to be interviewed on the show, just email us at MaximumRollEntertainment at gmail.com or Instagram at Maximum underscore Roll underscore Entertainment underscore LLC. And if you like Maximum Roll, check out some of the other Dungeons and Dragons podcasts and streams on the Maximum Roll Entertainment Podcast Network. This is Mark Reinhagen, creator of Vampire the Masquerade and all those other monster games. If you like what I did before, you're going to love the Accursed series of games using a narrative version of the D20 5e game system, in which you play cursed beings in a dark fantasy setting called Lost Lorn. I'm working with a collective of artists, writers, and game designers called the Tailspinners to bring this world and these games to life, and you're welcome to join us on the ride. We are releasing a new zine every month, uh, which in a series of six detail and outline a unique and amazing campaign setting. We started with Bloodstone Isle and are moving next on to Invictus, the city of bridges. For a nominal sum, you can get these delivered to you monthly on Patreon. Just type in patreon.com backslash lostlorn. Thanks for listening. Hey, hey, stop on by dnd420.com, where a guild of role players brought and bound together by Common Drive, the love of role playing games. We bring our individual skills and personalities together to breathe life into the worlds and games created by our game masters. We also offer podcasts such as Late Night with Jess and Jam. We have custom content, a bestiary for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, and a Discord server where you can find games or just hang out and make new friends. That's dnd420.com. Games like Dungeons and Dragons are more popular than ever, but with tons of rules, mountains of books, and so many dice, it can be hard to know where to get started. That's where Dungeoneering with Jason comes in. We're Dungeon Masters for Hire. Take a break and let us run your next game. One-on-one tutorials are also available for new DMs. Contact Dungeoneering with Jason today. Adventure is just a click away.